Today I would like to share with you another tutorial. It's another Excel spreadsheet and it's the sheet that I use to manage my energy bills and I use this to predict my bills based on my previous usage and I use it to estimate how much credit I think I will be in at any given point in the year. I don't have a smart meter for various reasons and I find that using the spreadsheets is just as effective and means that I have some semblance of control over the energy that I'm using. I can see what I'm using and I can manage my direct debits and work out how much money I need to have in credit, particularly as we approach, say, winter and you know that you need more credit in because you're likely to use more energy. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope you find it useful. Let me know in the comments if there's anything that I've missed, if anything is confusing and um, I hope you enjoy. Thank you very much for watching. Okay, so this is the spreadsheet that I use um, and don't forget that you can tailor these to suit your requirements. This is just me giving you a, an idea of how you might want to start producing a spreadsheet that tracks your energy usage and your energy spending. Now I've been using a spreadsheet for my energy since I moved into my flat here in 2018. So above this, which you won't see, is um, all the other years which I've kept on the top and then I put the new year underneath and keep going. And that is why here at the top you will see some other numbers. These are the roll-on numbers from last year. So I'm going to talk you through the columns and then you'll understand why those numbers are there. So column A is the month. Now I do this based on the billing month. So my month runs from the 11th to the 11th. So it's 11th of January, 11th of February, 11th of March because I do my readings every month and I get billed every month. The, the bit where it says 16D here is to remind me when I've been away and that would normally be when I have gone to my parents and I just want to remind myself how many days I was away for in that billing period because what it will do is produce an artificially low, um, low month in terms of energy usage and it's a, a good idea to have a reminder of why that will have been. So column A here is all the months and uh, what I also have here is this is the direct debit cost on my bill from the previous year. So in January 2023 my energy bill and that's all inclusive that's not just the actual energy that includes the standing charges and the VAT. January 2023 cost me £49.26. February was 58.83. March was 43.84 etc etc. And the reason I keep this here is because I like to see a comparison because I like to make sure that I'm not overly using. It might have been that it was a really hard winter that month. Uh, very often it's because the energy prices were different. They fluctuate wildly at the moment so it can be difficult to make predictions which in fact is why this spreadsheet can be quite useful. So as you can see my January billing has already been done. January 2023, when I would have been away probably roughly the same amount of time as I was this time, cost me £49.26. Column B represents money in and money out. So this 40 here represents the direct debit that I have paid. And in uh, for so from January onwards, I've put my de direct debit at £40 a month because I felt that I needed to add some more credit into my account to prep it now ready for next winter because again we have no idea what's happening with the prices. So uh, row 5 here represents 
the direct debit and I put it in into this column once it's been paid. My January bill, which came through and then that comes out of the credit on the account, was £39.18 and that has a minus figure in front of it because I'm obviously taking it away from the balance. And that is why at the top of column B I have this amount of £108.71. That represents the rollover credit that was left in my account on the 31st of December. So I'm prepping for next year, or as it is now this year. And then um, again here at February, my bill, uh, my direct debit goes out on the 6th, so that's been paid. And I've just had my February bill through on the 13th of February, and that came to £48.02. That's quite interesting because if you look at my previous year, that cost me £58.83. So I've spent £10 less, and that is almost certainly because energy prices have come down. So every month when something has been paid, I put it into this column. When it's preparing to be paid, it goes into column C. So these are all the months left of the year that haven't been accounted for yet. So again, still 40, 40, 40, 40, 40. These are all the direct debits that will go out each month. And then I am putting in my predictions out based on um, the previous year except for this one here, 48, because my previous month was 48, and I would imagine that my March usage is going to be very similar to my February usage, so I've just adjusted that number. And you can do that once your February or your previous month's bill comes through, and if you think, yeah, I'm probably going to have a similar month, you can put that in. So all of those go into column C as amounts that will come out this year at some point, but haven't yet. And at the bottom here, and you, hopefully you will remember from my previous um, how-to on how to do uh, the, the food budget spreadsheet, I showed you how to do auto sum. And you will want auto sum for this spreadsheet as well. So auto sum is up here on the right, and you can just go in and ask it to do adding up and taking away. So, for this one, we have an auto add up here. That's column B31, which represents all the payments that have already gone in and out. And it adds up the one at the top, because that credit has been rolled over from last year and still sits in my account. So that adds that with anything that's already been paid out, which will then give me a balance of um, £101.51, which is the current credit that is now in my account. Um, for column C, that is just a standalone auto sum there, which adds up all of column C. And that shows that at the end of the year, those remaining payments will give me a negative balance of £50. However, if I do an auto sum for this column D, which adds up column B and column C, as you can see there, that gives me the overall balance that will be left in my account at the end of this year. So you can see that by me changing my direct debits to £40 and based on average predict predictions for my expected usage for the year, which of course will change throughout the year because obviously as the bills come through into column B, that will um, that will adjust and it can, it could be quite minute. I tend to be quite um, over generous on my predictions. So if I think my bill might be 47 that month, I might make it 48. I try to be conservative about my predictions. But that shows here that I should potentially have 160 pounds in credit left when we reach December which will be my 11th of, uh, 11th of December, and that means that I'm going to be well set up to get through winter without needing to adjust my direct debits. Now, it may be that it ends up being more than that, and I can readjust my direct debits later in the year to balance this out a bit, and I'd rather do that than ask them to give me a chunk of money back because it just balances things out nicely and enables me to keep my direct debits as low as possible. Uh, columns D and E are my meter readings.
So these are the actual physical meter readings. Column D is my electric meter and column E is my gas. Now column D, the numbers in there are actually representative of the kilowatts per hour. So you can see here where I'm actually keeping the kilowatts per hour in green, you can see that that matches here and here. With the gas kilowatt per hour, it's a whole different thing. And I'm lucky because on my bill, it'll show me how to work that out. But if I am just manually doing this on a month by month basis, so I did my meter reading, say for February, and um, 15 units on the actual meter read, which I know equates to 169.6 kilowatts per hour. And it's just an interesting statistic. It's not something you need, but as you can see at the top here, this is my rollover from last year, and that shows that I used 625.9 electric kilowatts per hour and 970.6 of gas kilowatts per hour. And for nerds like me, that's just interesting. <laughs> you don't have to incorporate this if you just put your ordinary meter readings in. Now, the bracketed number is um, the meter reading from the same time the previous year. So you can see that last January 2023 it was 42 units, this time it's 48. And it's just nice to see the differences. I like to, to look at that. Again, you don't have to roll that over if you don't want to. If you are already uh, making the predictions based on your previous payments, in uh, as in um, column A, then you may not want to have that bracketed number. It's just the way I do it. You can personalize this as much as you like. Um, columns H and I are my actual meter readings. I keep this on hand in case something happens with my online account and um, there's a discrepancy. Maybe I've uploaded my meter readings and for some reason they've done something wrong on my billing and they've got it wrong and this gives me something to track by. So that's all that is. Uh, these are my electric meter readings, um, the actual numbers on the meters and these are the gas ones and they are just there for peace of mind in case I need the backup information. Uh, the reason that says 1st of January read there on J is because when the um, the energy prices change, you're supposed to do a reading the night before so that when your calculations are made, they know whether they're billing for the cheaper rate or the more expensive rate, depending on which way around it is. So I did my 1st of January, um, this was the read that I did for that changeover. So I've done that on the 31st of December. So that would have been active from the 1st of January. And then on the 11th of January, which is the normal day I do my meter readings, there it is. And then this one here, these two here are my normal February meter readings, which are, um, again, on the 11th of February. And that is basically what I do. Putting these numbers in, you don't necessarily have to do this, but I like to see how I'm faring against the year before. You can see that the numbers from this time last year are higher so far, mm -hmm. and that's because last year's energy prices were so much more expensive. They've come down quite a bit, and my supplier, which is Outfox the Market, is doing discounts on standing charges at the moment, so my bills also look lower because of that. Although I think last year at some point I was getting even more heavily discounted rates, uh, or they were charging less per kilowatt hour, I can't remember. Um, but you can see here that my, my bills have come right down, even though the discounts have changed. So each month, so let's take this column here. So uh, on 6th of March, my direct debit will go out. So I will copy and paste that one into there. Take that out of there. And then when I get my bill through on the 13th of the month, let's say it actually came out as £47.58. I will put that into this column here. And then that means that my numbers are now accurate again. That now tells me what is in currently in credit in my account, what is likely to go for the rest of the year, and then it gives me the up-to-date total showing me what the situation will be with my uh, account at the end of the year. 
So I hope that's been useful. Any questions, let me know. Um, again, I'm still learning how to do these well. This is only my second spreadsheet tutorial, and it might be I've missed something that seems really obvious to you, but it's not entered my head. And this is all part of the learning curve. So I do this because I like to be able to predict what's going on with my energy. I like to monitor my energy to make sure that I'm not um, overdoing things. It might be that if an appliance starts to go wrong or something, it might do something to my to my meter read. So it's good to see that things look like they're they're fitting in and everything seems to make sense. I don't have a smart meter. I won't have a smart meter. Um, they wouldn't be useful to me because I think this is a far more accurate way of doing meter readings than um, using a smart meter. I also don't particularly trust them um, and that's really the main reason I don't trust the technology to get it right because I do hear bad things about them and I like to be in better control. The other problem is that if I have a smart meter and there's a thing in the corner ticking away telling me how much energy I've used, how much I've not used, how over I'm going to be that month. I will really fixate on that and I will probably get a bit too obsessed and anxious about the numbers. I have friends who have who have smart meters and you can apparently you can set your your limits on how much you want to spend each month and they just look at it and they go over the limit and they're like, oh well we've gone over the limit again. So I don't understand the point of why they needed a smart meter because they're not paying any attention to it anyway. They just look at the numbers go, oh, well, we've ruined that this month. And then they just carry on using energy. But it's very difficult, depending on your living circumstances, to knuckle down on these things. For me, it's easy. Um, it's very easy at the moment. The weather's been pretty good. Um, it's now the 15th of February when I'm recording this. It's after dark and I've still got two windows on vent. The flat went up to 16 degrees today. It's just so nice. This does feel like the oncoming of spring. So I'm really happy that now my bills are going to start going down. So yeah, I spent £10 less than this time last year on my energy. Um, although I suspect that's got a lot more to do with the price of energy and the price of my standing charges than it has to do with my usage. But who cares? The most important thing is that those numbers are down. And then next month for March, I had spent uh, £43.84 this time last year. Um, I've left it, a, a, I've just made up that number for the spreadsheet, but let's imagine that it was the same as last year. In April, because I know I'm going to be away for two weeks between March and April, and I know that I will be using my energy, actually being here for 19 days, a lot of my appliances and things stay on when I'm away. So I have an undercounter fridge and two countertop freezers, which use quite a lot of energy but uh, it also enables me to work out what the difference is. So I know if I'm away for 10 days this month and my energy is five pounds less than it normally would be if I was here for all 30 or 31 days, I know that me being here costs five pounds a month in extra electricity and that everything else is running a standard. So that's really interesting to know when you're looking at different appliances and various things because it enables you to monitor the difference it makes when you are here plugging in a laptop, switching on a light, putting on the television, um, charging your phone or your electric toothbrush or whatever else it is that you do, compared to when you're not here at all and the only things that are running are the standard appliances that remain on all the time and maybe a night light for when to come on when you're not here. So that's really handy to know as well and that's enabled me to see that by changing all my bulbs to LED, um, although I'm using my lights more, it's not cost me anything because LEDs are so blooming cheap to run. So I hope you found that useful. Any questions, let me know and I will get this posted up so that you can start monitoring your energy and hopefully worrying a bit less about what your bills are going to look like because for me the most important thing is that end number at the end of the year, I can see that if everything ticks along quite similarly to how I've put in the numbers, I would be £160 in credit before winter really hits and that already makes me feel less concerned about next winter coming. 
it's just one less thing to worry about. It's very forward planning. It also gives me lots of breathing space. So undoubtedly at some point, some of these energy bills will go up again, but it means I have lots of breathing room based on the energy that I normally use um, that will also help keep some of that energy anxiety at bay. So this is a really good one to have. You can also do this manually if you prefer to use pen and paper have a calculator or if you prefer your long division, you can keep this as just a list that you manually edit every month and still come out with what that prediction is. And it might be that you prefer to do this than just relying on your energy supplier to tell you the information online or however else you do your energy readings. Um, so yeah, so that's it, I'm done. I hope you found this useful and uh, do drop me a line if there's anything I've missed off and let me know if you found this useful because um, I certainly find it useful in my life. Thank you very much for your time and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye bye.